how do we bulletproof the lower back? How do we build a resilient lower back? What we're going to do in this tutorial is look at three different exercises that help us build what I describe as a resilient low back. It's not necessarily a strong low back, it's a resilient one. I don't think a strong low back is a good way of describing it. So when we build a resilient lower back, we essentially need two things, and we're going to highlight these two things through three exercises. If you want to build a resilient lower back, hit the link in the description and you'll go through to my How to Build Core Strength and Endurance online 12 week program, which will take you through what we cover in this tutorial, but it will help you build that resi resilient lower back that you want. The first thing we need to do in building a resilient lower back is getting the right muscles activated at the right time. Now, most people think we need to get the muscles of the lower back activated. And that can be useful, but what's more useful is if we activate the muscles of the upper back, the muscles of the hips, and the muscles of the torso. So all the muscles around it. So what we're then able to do is spread load all around it. So how do we do that? Well, the first exercise is very simple. We're gonna go down into a bird dog, and what we're gonna do because this covers quite a lot of bases, then we're going to look at two more which sort of isolate this off a little bit. So we're going to come down into this position and we're going to lift an arm and we're going to lift a leg. Now what's this doing? This is essentially activating many of the muscles that we want to activate. So when we lift the leg up, we activate the glute muscle. Obviously when we lift the other leg up, we activate the other glute muscle. So these are two very, effective, uh, two very effective muscles to get active if we want a resilient lower back. So we need to get the glutes firing properly. You can also go around to glute medius, glute minimus. That's gonna be helpful as well. But just for this, I want you to understand that rather than just focusing on the lower back muscles, focus on all the muscles that are around it as well. When we come back into this position, we, we just take the arm. What are we doing there? Well, what we're starting to do here is starting to activate the muscles of the mid back. So the longissimus and the iliocostalis. As we come into this position, they activate. And again, that's holding up the, uh, the lower back. They've got, a much, they've got a much longer lever arm, which makes them a much more effective low back stabilizing muscle, albeit they are of the mid back. So we've got those muscles. What we've also got, if we pack the shoulder, We've also got the lats involved in that as well. So with the big latissimus dorsi here that goes down and attaches into the thoracolumbar fascia. And I'll, we'll talk more about that as we go through. But the bird dog is a very effective exercise to get all those muscles working across the back. And you can do it in that sort of diagonal type of sling type of chain of muscles as well. So it integrates a lot of muscles together. Um, you could even take it a step further and say you're getting a little bit of internal external oblique because again we're lifting up mus uh, we're lifting up limbs on either side of the body so these muscles have to work as well so all of these muscles are kind of involved at a lowish level during the bird dog if we want to take it up a notch and take it up a level we can start to isolate so we'll, the second exercise it's very simply, it's a bridge. So we come into this position, turn the abs on, up, squeeze the hips. So what we're starting to do here is now starting to isolate a little bit more, the glute muscles, squeezing them together, potentially overly squeezing them, but we've also got abs involved as well. So we've got front and back, again, helping support what the lower back wants to do and making it much more resilient to everyday life, to exercise, to sport, to whatever it may be that we're doing. So we've got the bridge, uh, we've got the bird dog, and we've got the bridge. The bridge is now starting to isolate some of the muscles that we were um, starting to introduce with the bird dog, which is kind of the jack of all trades, if you will. Now we're starting to look on to, to more specific uh, uh, exercises, which are starting to integrate more specific muscles. The third exercise is a side plank. Now again, we can start in the kneeling position and I'll explain why we're using a side plank when we come on to the progression in the next part of the tutorial. But we come into this position, but what we can do here is we can get lats working because I'm just pushing this shoulder down, 
Again, this is supporting the strength holding myself up here, but also we've got all of these muscles, internal, external obliques working. Eventually we'll start talking about, they are working, the glute medius, glute minimus, um, but we'll talk about how we can access them a little bit more. But for now, sort of the, the first part that we need to be able to build a resilient back is get the right muscles working at the right time, which means getting all the muscles around the lower back to work as well, because they help the muscles of the lower back do their job much more effectively. Because they are very small muscles, they aren't very good at being strength muscles, if you will. Whereas these slightly bigger muscles are much better at being strength muscles, which allow you to build a more resilient back because it can cope with so much more because so many more muscles are working and so many more bigger muscles are working as well. The second part is that we want to build strength endurance. That's why I called my program How to Build Low Back Strength Endurance, because this is the main component that we need. So we need to be able to have a lower back that can cope with higher amounts of strength or higher amounts of force, which is what the strength part's for. What we also need to be able to do is have that strength over a period of time, because if we've only got it for five minutes, then what happens if we work out for 10, 15, 20 minutes, half an hour? We need to have the strength and the endurance to go with it. So number one, we get all those muscles working. Then what we need to do is start building in the strength and endurance to be able to do that. Now, there are many exercises in which we can do this, as is the same with part one. There are many exercises, not these sort of three exercises and their progressions, it's not one size fits all. I'm not saying everyone should be doing these exercises. I'm saying everyone should be building these concepts and the, following these principles. But what we could do with the bridge to make the bridge work a little bit harder and get muscles a little bit stronger is very simply go from a double leg, bring the feet together, come up and go to a single leg. I'm still lifting the same amount of body weight, but I'm doing it now on all on one leg and then I can change over. Now there are ways of progressing from this double leg position into this single leg position if that's too much of a jump. We can just simply go to a march. So it's just little bits of extra strength to go through the hips without over exhausting things. So there are all these parts that come into it, but that's what the 12 week program's for. It's there to help you make those steps. And there are, the, the, the progressions are small enough to help you do that. So the first part is getting the glutes stronger, getting the glutes to be able to last for longer, strength, endurance, and being able to, again, keep those muscles active all the way through the, um, uh, the workout. The second one, which would be a progression for the bird dog, is a single leg RDL. Now, why is this a progression for the, um, for the bird dog? Well, for the very simple reason that we are coming into this forward position. Because what we're starting to get now is we're starting to get more activation through here, but it's supported by this glute working here and this glute working here. What we've also got, glute medius, glute minimus working, adductus working to maintain the position of the knee and keep you balanced. So what we're starting to do is get into these types of positions. What we're then doing is building the stability through the hip to be able to have smooth movement. Again, we can pack the shoulders to get a little bit more out of the lats, or we can hold a weight to get a little bit more out of the lats. But with regards to my online 12 week program, it's all body weight because I understand that not everyone has got weight. So everyone can do this program. Everyone can get the right muscles active and everyone will build strength and endurance just because it progressively overloads. So we have to get glutes working, longissimus, iliocostalis, lats. So we're starting to get all these muscles working much more effectively and we're getting to uh, get them to work together as well, which again is very important. What we don't want is just the low back muscles, which is another reason 
why I tend to keep people away from back extensions because they aren't necessarily the most effective way of doing it plus there are risks that come with it but that's for another tutorial. What we've then got is the third exercise which is a, uh, a side plank or a plank up into a side plank. So what we start to do now is integrate this torso area. So we would go into a plank like so, we would lift an arm up and we would roll round come back and change sides into this. So again, what we're doing here is we're getting rectus abdominis, internal external obliques, elements of the hip. Another one, if you want to get a little bit more out of glute medius, this is a little bonus one for you. Side plank, lift a leg up. You'll get much more out of glute medius, glute minimus with that type of exercise. But plank to side plank or side plank with a leg raise will be just as effective. So all of this will start to integrate all of that and it will help your lower back last longer. It will reduce the fatigue on it, which will reduce the risk of injury. So it's very important when we're talking about building a resilient lower back, we're not just building strength. We're building strength, which is the ability to withstand force, but we wanna be able to do that over a period of time and not only reduce, its, its, uh, reduce fatigue, but reduces risk of injury, which is what comes with that reduction in fatigue. Many thanks for watching this tutorial. The two components, to quickly summarise, number one is getting the right muscles to fire at the right time. Number two is getting um, the right components, which is the strength and the endurance, which is the ability to withstand force over a period of time. So that's what we want to be able to do within any lower back training program, which is what my online training program does anyway. So many thanks for watching. If you've liked the, if you've enjoyed the video, hit the like button. If you have a comment or a question, leave it down below in the comment section. If you've learned something new, hit the thanks button. And if you've got, uh, if you want to watch more tutorials like this, please do hit the subscribe button and the bell icon.